Hey, it's Dustin from Dallas, Texas, delivering a bunch of airplane tires. You're watching TJV on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Have a wonderful day. Big Frank. Big Frank. Louis guy. Louis tough guy. Louis tough guy. Tough guy, tough guy, tough guy. Cut your nose. <laughs> Not so tough. Why well, don't look at me like that? You make me okay, I'll give it back. You make me feel bad, man. There you go. Give it back. Give it back. We got Chevy over here. He's staying home this trip. We got uh oh no, we had an incident over here. Oh no. Oh no. What happened here? What did you do to the cotton-headed ninny muggins? What did you do to him? Did you do this? <laughs> okay. We got uh, Wiener sulking over here because Britt just left for work. How's it going, Wiener? Doing good? Doing good? And the weasel down there resting before we leave. He's coming with me on the trip. So? We're going down to Indiana, Kentucky, with some firearm equipment, some headers. They need some headers from us up here, so I'm gonna bring that to them down there. And I'm picking up some steel in Tennessee. It's waiting there for me already on a preloaded trailer. And I'm taking that back up to Canada. So we're bringing them down some, some headers for some, some swathers, I think. And we're bringing up some steel for some buildings. So nice little, nice little trade going on here. We still gotta chain down those headers and tie them down, so we better get going. It's snowing a little bit outside, so I don't want to wait too long. But I want to wait long enough so that it's warmed up a little bit. <laughs> well, it was a little cold, but my beard kept me warm, so we were okay. Got this load tied down. Let's go take a look at it real quick, and then we're off to Indiana. My first drop is 1,836 kilometers away in southern Indiana. Second drop is a little further. I think it's about another 150 kilometers, an hour and a half from there, down in Kentucky. So we got two full days of driving ahead of us. So let's go take a look out here. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go. Take a look at my handiwork. Show you what I did. Look at the snow. I didn't do that. I didn't do that at all. Here it is. So we have these four straps going over. That's holding them both down in the back, right? There's two of them. We got these chains here holding it from going back and forth. So we got it being held down and we got it being held in place. And there's steel guards over on the top up there that the straps don't rip. And we got two of these. You guys ready for this? There's a farmer in Indiana waiting for me. Let's not keep him waiting too long. He needs me. All these things catch a lot of air. Wow, I pulled these before, but man, this is like just dragging a giant parachute behind me. Aerodynamic level zero. Wow, the air is getting sucked in right behind the cab of my truck and just hammering the front of those headers. Like I said, it's literally a giant parachute. It's like they're hauling a brick wall behind me. The air is just slamming into it and dragging me down. Yikes. That's what those chains are for. <laughs> Otherwise the wind would just blow them right off of it. Oh, this is not going to be good for fuel economy. Oh boy. Let's hope for a tailwind. Right now, we're working pretty hard just to do 60 mile an hour. United States of America. Just crossed into North Dakota. And we now have 1,719 kilometers to go. For my American friends, that's around 1,100 miles. Maybe a little more. Maybe closer to 1,200. I don't know, you do the math. Because a thousand, a thousand miles is about 1,600 kilometers. A little further. So that'd be 
1060 miles maybe ah whatever 1100 sticking with that answer 1100 mi miles right diesel why are you looking at me like that do i look like a mathematician to you i'm just a truck driver man you sort of have to be a mathematician to be a truck driver if you think about it we do a lot of math every day we're traveling at this speed for this amount of time how long will it take to get from point a to point b I told my teacher, what is this for when I was learning that in like high school? Well, when am I ever going to need this? Technically, we don't because we got GPS to tell us. It makes us lazy, but it's still good to know how to do it. So we're traveling at 100 kilometers an hour. We have 1,717 kilometers to go. How long will it take us to get there if we stop for a 10-hour night and we stop for a total of two hours? Let's make it three hours all together on the way down. How long will it take us to get there? If you said 30 hours, you would be correct. 30 hours from right now, we should be at the doorstep of our customer. 17 hours of just driving. Add 10 hours on there for night. We're now sitting at 27 hours. Add an extra three hours on there for stops, bathroom breaks, eating. 30 hours. I was hoping that by the time we got down to Fargo here in North Dakota that it would be a little bit warmer. Hasn't warmed up yet. We're still sitting at minus 20 Celsius. I believe that's what, around minus five Fahrenheit? Minus 10, somewhere in there? Minus 20 Celsius. We're gonna keep going. I'd like to go another five hours tonight yet so that I can make it all the way down into Indiana tomorrow. You stay in your lane there, buddy. Stay in your lane, thank you. I'm gonna be turning on to Interstate 94 eastbound. A little bit in front of us here. Just get into this lane here without running anybody over. That would be Mint. There we go. Yeah, I wasn't really expecting it, honestly, to be uh, that much warmer here. Winnipeg and Fargo usually have very close to the same temperatures. All the cold air down here is the same cold air that passed over Winnipeg. It all came from uh, came from the Hudson's Bay. The Arctic air swoops down over the Hudson's Bay, over Manitoba, and into North Dakota, South Dakota. So you're welcome. You shared some of your lovely warm weather with us last week. We figured we'd return the favor and share some of our lovely Arctic weather with you. It's an equal relationship. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. I'm using a, a different mic. I have it mounted up here now, instead of this big fluffy one on top of the camera. Can you see me in the reflection? So instead of this big fluffy thing on top of the camera here, I've just got the mic mounted up here. I'm going to see how that how that works, see how it picks it up. Get you guys down there, that back there, and see how it goes. I'm rattling over there. Stop rattling. Okay, so well, if this mic situation works better, that's... A lot better for me. Let me know what you guys think. Hopefully the audio doesn't get all messed up for the rest of this vlog, okay? Because I'm just going to test it out for the rest of this vlog. And if there's rattles or anything, I am very sorry. We'll change it up tomorrow then. So we're at the rest area uh, just past Moorhead, Minnesota. We're just into Minnesota. On the other side of the state border from Fargo, North Dakota. Meters. Keep to the right on I-94. Calm down, Karen. Let's get out of the rest area first. I just did my half hour break here, so now we have six hours and 54 minutes available to us yet to drive today. Don't need all of that, because I'm not going that far. I would like to go another five hours, but I mean, that's going to bring us pretty late into the night. We'll see how we feel. We don't have to go that far if we don't want to. A couple more hours, though. A couple more hours. In 100 meters, keep to the right on I-94. Remember how my chair was always making that weird noise when it went up and down, like the noise? It fixed itself. 
I don't know what I did, but it's fixed. Continue on this road for 251 kilometers. Aye, aye, Captain. Wait, I'm the Captain. Aye, aye. Whatever you are. Oh boy, this guy's not gonna move over for me. Okay. All right. No problem. Oh, because you're turning. That makes sense. No problem. No problem. I understand. I got a long merge lane here, so it's all good. I'll forgive you. 110 meters. Definitely not stopping here, but we're in Rothsay, Minnesota. Well, we're stopping here, but we're not stopping here for any longer than a coffee. Park up here, the pumps are never really busy. Park up here near them. Run in there, grab a quick coffee. See if we can get past, well, I'll get close to Minneapolis. Let's see how far we can get. You guys know that since I've been on this bean to cup, bean to cup or fresh ground bean coffee, uh, since, since I've discovered it at Flying J, I've realized that a lot of other places have these machines. They're just sort of in disguise. They look like a big block of a machine that you have no idea what it does. But if you look closely and read it and look at the top, there's beans up in top and there's a little tray. This truck stop here in Rothose, it has a bean to cup machine here as well. I just didn't notice it there. I mean, I've always seen it there, but now I was about to pour a regular cup of coffee. I was like, oh, I wish I had the Flying J bean to cup coffee. And then I looked to my left and I'm like, what's this machine? I thought it was like a one of those, uh, I don't know, espresso machines or something or cappuccino machines. I look at them like, coffee. This thing makes coffee. So I went and fiddled around with the touch screen a little bit. And, well, what do you know? Bean to cup coffee. I'm looking for, uh, not actively looking, but you know, when I'm in Walmart and places, my mom found one at Canadian Tire recently. I'm looking for uh, a bean to cup coffee maker for at home. A machine that I can use at home, one that grinds the beans itself, cleans itself if possible. I don't know if only the commercial ones do that or not, but I want to find a really good one. I don't want just a cheap one. I want just any one. I want a specific one. I want to find it. I know it's out there. I don't know which one it is yet, but I'm going to find it and I'm going to buy it. And we're going to have the same bean to cup coffee at home. It's going to be magical. Well... <laughs> this new mic apparently didn't work so well because the audio for the next three days is messed up. Either it's gone completely or distorted or corrupted. I am not very happy about this. Because I didn't check the footage, right? Because sometimes I'll just film a few days without even checking it. And then I'll put it all into the computer when I have time between loads or whatever. And then I'll uh, make sure it was all hunky-dory. And usually it is. And I trusted this microphone to work because it did when I first tried it, right? 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 So for the rest of this vlog, there's no audio. Zero. Just my voice now while I'm editing this and watching I don't know what to tell you guys, man. I had another, what is it, another 10, 15 minutes of footage yet here. And I guess we'll have to skip it. I guess tomorrow and the next day I'll be doing more of a music montage because there's no audio there either. And we're going to go back to the big fluffy mic in a few days. Uh, I just, when I'm doing this voiceover. I'm here in Jackson. I've already picked up my next load of steel, and I'm sitting here with a, some spare time in my hands when at the computer, and for the next few days, guys, sorry, the audio is going to be a little messed up. So, uh, let's have fun with it anyways. We'll add some music to it, and I'll show you. Maybe some of you will be happy about this. You don't have to listen to my voice as much. But... It is what it is. Learned my lesson. Should have checked the footage daily and not put it off.